everybody video here for you today now about four or five days ago i did a video on the mega flood that happened at camas prairie montana and that is right there lake missoula just some epic flooding in that part of the country but today we're going to talk about the floodings that happened here in the scab lands of washington came down through this area a tremendous amount of water definitely a mega flood we're going to talk about some of these features and since i did the video on camas prairie just a few days ago i have this on my mind let's go down to washington and start talking about some of these features down here these flood stories can be told very well on google earth you learn a lot the more you look but here this area is a lot bigger than camas prairie evidence of an unimaginable amount of water coming across here and just scouring topsoil off of this area and leaving these scars here on Google Earth. They look like rivers today. These areas that were just scoured. It's really hard to imagine all the water that went over here. Went down the Columbia River in ancient times. But there is just the evidence all over this landscape of a mega flood. Come up here by Spokane today. You can just tell a huge current of water just tore through the landscape wiping away anything that previously existed. But let's just go look at a couple features right down here. I know a lot of you have heard Randall Carlson talk about this epic flood event, but here just south of Spokane, evidence in the landscape, massive flood going across here. These lakes, remnants, an epic flood. You come up here, this is called Williams Lake right down here. And these finger lakes that were carved the landscape but between badger lake and williams lake here ancient waterfall and this thing right here is as large as the american falls at niagara falls that classic horseshoe shape down here totally dry i believe the american falls at niagara falls are about 1056 feet across if my memory serves me correctly Knees here, that's about a thousand feet across, that classic horseshoe shape. Evidence of a massive amount of water, probably hundreds of feet deep tearing across here. Then if we just go right up this way, here are some more dry falls. Right down here, some plunge pools. Water was very deep. Just one of many features carved in this landscape in this general area here. There is that area south of Spokane. Let's just go west here. But it's just incredible how much this area was scoured. This flood rolled across the land. What a sight that must have been. Let's go up here near the Columbia River, right down in this area. Here is where the Columbia River came down and then turned west. But in this area, you have some evidence here of how high the water marks were. You have some strand lines up here. Let's see if I can find one here for you right down here. But evidence in this area, get an idea right here. That tells you the high water mark or the flooding that went through here in ancient times. I believe there's some right over here too. Evidence in this area. And right up here. With the evidence there. Those high water marks here. Those marks in the canyon walls here are probably not the evidence of the highest mark of the flood because it poured over some of these areas, and here you see an upper canyon way above the present-day Columbia River, where it shows strand lines of water elevations here, way up high above the river today. Now here's that area, and I'm just keeping this very simplistic. I'm not up on all my terms. I'm not a hydrogeology expert like Mr. Carlson is, but I did stay at a Holiday Inn Express once. You know, sorry, that is an old joke I've used in about three different videos. But here is different levels of terracing, different levels of the flooding here. It might have gotten to about 900 feet deep. Here is Plum Point looking down at Grand Coulee. Then you come over here, way up on this ridge here. See some more strand lines, evidence of the watermarks here. How high this flood actually was. Is this just an outburst flood or floods or... Something more catastrophic, well, there's a heck of a lot of water coming down here, way far away from, they say, was the source of this flood, but here, the Grand Coulee Dam, right down here. This whole landscape up here is very impressive. 
can see where the present day river is down here, but you can tell this ancient flood went from here all the way over to this area here, way out this way, covered this whole area down here. There are some features here just by Ryan Cooley that are pretty famous. Here's a look on Google Street View down in this area. Here is Steamboat Rock right out here. A very impressive geological formation caused maybe 13, 14, 14 and a half thousand years ago when an epic flood tore through here. The dating, I don't think we have that exactly right. But man, there are some very impressive features out here. This whole landscape is pretty alien to what you normally see in the Northwest. Here's a look from the top of Steamboat Rock, and this will give you some scale. Look at the vastness of this ancient flood. Top of this feature here was one's part. The land coming across here, and a massive flood tore away all this land here. That is pretty incredible when you really think about it. Just down from Steamboat Rock, we have one of these famous flood features from this mega flood, Graham Hancock. And Randall did a video from right down in this area. This is Dry Falls right down here. Evidence of a massive flood tearing across the area here. Plunge Pool, Dry Falls Lake remaining. And I believe Niagara Falls, if it was superimposed, would cover this area right about here. And we have this huge system here. Evidence of an unimaginable, unimaginable flood going over here. This is deep lake here, carved when flood waters just carved right into the rock. But here's that one area as far across as Niagara Falls, but a heck of a lot higher. And this is just one area in a whole set of ancient waterfall systems in this area here. Right down here, there are potholes carved in the ground, underwater vortexes, stones, and just carved these Ancient potholes into the ground right here. They are numerous in this area. And they go down quite a way. I know Randall talked about these in the St. Croix River Valley, the border between Wisconsin and Minnesota, in one of his latest podcasts. But there, uh, flood carved holes right there. Here are where those potholes are. And the water was really deep here. How do we know this? Well, it's obvious. The water tore across this ledge here above the potholes and even carved potholes up here. And if we go back out, look right over in this area here. This is way above the falls on the plateau up here. There is a dry ancient waterfall right down here. That is not a small one. Just this flood feature here is over 200 feet wider than the American Falls at Niagara. Notice they have falls next to it here. Back out. Another one right up here. So this is a massive flood feature. Ancient waterfalls up on top of the terrace here. Evidence that this water was incredibly deep. Then down from Dry Falls, we have these areas here. This is Jasper Canyon right down here. This is a canyon in the upper terrace of this flood feature here. But evidence of a massive amount of water tearing through here. Then if we back up, come right down here, there is another one of those ancient waterfalls up on top of the terrace. Plunge pool right there. Ancient lake probably existed there for at least a while. From overhead, you can really get an idea what these paleo currents look like, and they were unimaginably large. It is just pretty incredible to think about how much water came through here. Down here, these are the Lake Lenora Caves right down here. I think there's evidence of human habitation going back quite a ways from there. Right down here, there are those ancient potholes carved by the underwater tornadoes. And then this area right down here, this is called the Great Blade. I believe that was named by J. Harlan Bretz when he did his studies of these flood features here decades ago. There are some of those features I've been showing you, the Great Blade. Right down here in the south, Steamboat Rock, right up here. Let's go over to this area. It's quite a ways away from the river. So I'll show you the glacial erratic just sitting out here. Sitting out here today. These were massive. These were transported on ancient icebergs. This is called Jaeger Rock. This is not a small one, but this was deposited. Then the remains of the iceberg melted. It had plenty of 
dirt and silt in it. And that's what it's resting upon right there. Then as we back up here, you notice there's another one sitting right back there. These glacial erratics transported down from mountains to the north. And then if we back out here, you notice they are all over this area here. Large stones deposited by Ice Age floods coming down in icebergs from way to the north. Here are some of the features that I have just showed you. There is Yeager Rock location. Let's move back over to the Columbia River right here. Let's go down by Quincy, Trinidad down here. These are called the West Bar Ripples right down here. I'm not up on my terminology as much as Randall is, of course. I don't think anybody possibly could be. He is a great source of info what happened down here. But here you see on this terrace above the river, these current ripples here, evidence of a large amount of water going through here. And continuing down this massive gorge on the Columbia River. There is a good look at the West Bar current ripples here. And the flood would have came over. And there are formations on this upper terrace, you notice, right down here. Those are the West Bar current ripples. And we swing around. These terraces here mark different elevations of the flood. And this feature right here. We talked about this on the Joe Rogan experience. Randall went over this. This is called Potholes Coulee. Evidence that the ancient floodwaters tore through the ancient bedrock here, formed these lakes. Softer areas that just tore out. And when the flood was done, that's all that was left. A couple waterfalls. Ancient plunge pool lakes still remain. And this feature coming out. Then the water plunged into the ancient Columbia River down here. Here is a view looking down where this flood water were to pour down into the Columbia River Basin here. Scoured the softer part of the basalt. I believe that is what the rock formation is, is up here, formed about 17 million years ago. You see it form this canyon going down into the Columbia River. When did this event take place? Well, could it have taken place 12,900 years ago? Maybe about 14 and a half thousand years ago. There was also an event that seemed to melt a heck of a lot of water in this area. About a year and a half ago, Ben and I from Uncharted X did a podcast, and we talked over some footage he shot in this area. We talked about Native American flood myths and how cataclysmic this flood would have actually been. So I'm just going to play that minute clip right now. Yep, uh, totally. During, during that ice age. Yep. It did. Yeah, cata cataclysm's the word. I, I just and it's it's one of my favorite topics as well. But I just don't think we've we we have any real conceived notion of what of just how bad this this cataclysm was. And even the Hollywood movies about giant disasters and things, I don't think they even come close to to describing the the true brutality of of what it meant to be around when the uh, when the younger Dries went down. Right. I think one of the best sources and uh, one that people might ignore is Native American flood myths. Right. And some of these go back, you know, to maybe 10, 12,000 years ago, because if you listen to Randall Carlson talk about this and then you read those North American flood myths, they match. Yeah. They really match and it's almost eerie. And to be a Native American storyteller, you had to memorize those stories word for word, get them exact, or you were not going to retell stories. Right. Yeah, it's the uh, the oral traditions, the oral the oral uh, the oral story taping, uh, storytelling yeah. traditions, right? Yeah, and it's yeah. I, this is something when when I was doing a lot of this work with Luke on Pukaje, is something an angle that we took uh, at this, which is and it, it goes to the Native American topic, which is this. You have other sources for knowledge, and one of those is these indigenous wisdom keepers. Here is that impressive flood feature. These lakes were just scoured in the ground. Where the dry falls are here today, this is about two and a half miles across, almost three and a half miles across, where the land was scoured. Up by these lakes that were grooved in the ground here, this is about four miles across. So that is a pretty impressive flood feature. Right down here is a campground. That's about a half mile across. That is a amphitheater campground down there. And if we go a little farther to the east, this is called Frenchman Coulee, right down here. 
ancient waterfalls. Tremendous amount of the earth was just scoured away here. Here is Frenchman Coulee. These canyons today are pretty dry. You were here maybe 13, 14,000 years ago. You would have been under a heck of a lot of water. Maybe we have some evidence up here, some watermarks. Then this water just poured down here into the Columbia River. There is Frenchman Coulee. And if we back out here, you kind of get an idea. If there was massive flooding coming down near Potholes Coulee, it probably extended from here all the way over to here. One big wall of water coming down. Frenchman Coulee is right around the bend here. This will give you an idea of some of the landscape here. There are certain strand lines show different water levels there. Water was incredibly deep going through in ancient times. This will give you an idea of the scoured landscape here. Columbia River, one of the more impressive places. Views we have in the United States. Here is that north cliff wall, the Columbia River Valley. From that overlook I just showed you, evidence of ancient flooding going all the way up and down the valley here. There are some more canyons carved out by this ancient flooding. Upper, middle, and lower wall there, rip wall. I just thought this was an interesting one to do because there are so many things to look at in this area, and certainly I did not cover them all. Now here's a link I will leave below from the Washington State Parks Department. Here are the channeled scab lands of brown. This whole area here is where the flood scoured the earth. Here is Glacial Lake Columbia up here, what they think was an ancient lake. This in the purple, Lake Missoula. That's what I talked about in my Canvas Prairie Flood video. But would a lake that size, when it started draining, Leave these kind of features? I guess that is the big question. How many floods, maybe? There are a lot of things I don't think we have the solid answer to yet. But that's a heck of a lot of water here going over the state of Washington. Here is some more evidence of flooding, terracing here. They say this water level could have been 800 feet or deeper. That's an incredible amount of water going through here all at once. Going back to this map here, here is this ancient flooding, but you notice here, before the water level went up in a pretty short period. Here is where the ancient shoreline extended to out from Washington and Oregon here. And as soon as this flooding took place, shoreline went all the way back to here. That is a little tour from overhead. I like doing these once in a while. Farmland over here. And signs of an ancient cataclysm that tore through here. In geological time, well, not too long ago. That is just one of thousands of features that I could have showed here in this video today. There are so many things to learn from overhead. Geology, ancient flooding. This was one of the most massive flood events and probably the Earth's history. And the Earth still shows the signs of it. Just thought I would take you on a little tour, give you some looks, give you some idea. This ancient flooding here in this area, did the one on Camas Prairie there a few days ago. Hope you thought that was interesting. You all have a very nice day.